drivers thought you dubbed in uh, your voice to match the actions of the, of the drawn character, but not so. The voice becomes the structure of the performance, and the the animator matches his drawings and sound and everything like that to that performance. You know the rules. There are times when I can't explain my, my... actions even to you. Hey, that line worked great in sixth grade, but in case you hadn't noticed... We'll discuss this later. We record ensemble, which means all the actors are in the room, ideally, at the same time. So that they can not only act, but they can react, which is a big part of acting. It makes their editing process a lot more complicated, I'm sure, but it gives the performances that feeling of a real dramatic interaction. Half of me wants to strangle you. And what does the other half want? To hit you with a truck. We used to date. Ah. ah. I liken it most to the old radio shows, where all the actors are standing in front of their microphones with the music stand, and they've got their scripts, and that of course is one of the joys of voice acting is you don't ever have to memorize a line of dialogue, your script is right there in front of you. My word! You can't turn to deliver a line because then you're off mic. So we really, we're just totally dependent upon ears. Thanks for coming after me. I owed you. Well, I'd like to think our relationship isn't just restricted to saving each other from freaks and weirdos. Kevin Conroy, who played Batman, and I were probably never facing each other whenever we worked because all of the actors were seated in a straight line facing the engineering booth. Maybe we'd have a place for each other without Gotham, without the freaks, maybe without masks. Maybe. They used to kid me because I was the only one who would stand up. Yes, well, this is all tremendously boring. They had these little, you know, those separators that you see, like, for musicians, so your sound doesn't bleed into other people's mics. And everybody's sitting down at their little music stand, and I just thought to energize the character, to shake my fist, and I felt I've got to stand up. What do you think we can do about that? Joke! Very often I'll hear Bruce Tim over my shoulder, he's usually sitting behind me, I'll hear him say to the guys who are drawing the character design or whatever, doing the storyboard, watch what that actor's doing, because I want you to draw that in the storyboard. Sometimes you don't even know, you know, where you are. You don't know what, what the visual is around you. I mean, Andrea Romano, our director, would be sitting in the booth saying, Okay, you're running, you're running over the top of a roof, you jump, you land 20 feet, you turn, you see him on your left-hand side, you grab the, the golden statue and take off, and the three villains come in, you know, and grab you. And then we'd start doing the dialogue. I love voiceover animation because people can't see you. You make these choices that you would never do if you were doing a live action role. <laughs> the other thing that I had no experience at and learned, you know, sort of on the job was the special effects sounds. Catwoman lands on her feet. Well, what does that sound like? <laughs> you know, she punches somebody in the face. <laughs> you, know, <clears throat> you know, I mean, all of those kinds of things that we don't usually, it doesn't usually come up in conversation. A lot of the talent on this show had never done animation before which was just the direction they wanted to go in in terms of how dramatic they wanted to make it. It led for some really wonderful actors coming on the show. We cast a lot of actors who have what we call a voice with character. And so when we cast, for example, Bob Hastings as Commissioner Gordon, every time he opens his mouth, you know that's Commissioner Gordon. Listen here, you simpering little twit. You were foolish enough to invite the Penguin. I had no experience with animation. And, um, and I just went in basically on a voiceover audition. I said, well, let me just come up with some voices. Let me just try some stuff. So I started, I came up with this spirit and very dark. And this, I went into this whole other place that no one else had gone to, I guess. And I could saw them all running around in the booth. And I realized that I had touched a nerve. The room of producers and writers and people sat together and said, we are done. We have found the voice of Batman. If I'd gotten there five minutes sooner, how long before I let someone else I care about down? Leslie, Alfred. You. <laughs> One of the things that informs the Joker is his laugh. And I remember reading the comic books, it was ha 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 ha, but lots of ho ho he he ho ho he. <laughs> his laugh should be like a musical instrument. It should sort of illustrate his mood. It could be ominous and 
intimidating. <laughs> he could be gleeful and with wild abandon. <laughs> but I didn't want to just have one rote laugh. <laughs> I was driving in the first recording session thinking, now how did I laugh? I'm on the freeways in, La in Los Angeles. <laughs> No, that's not it. No, that's not it. Now, I'm sure no one in Los Angeles would <laughs> look twice at somebody. Look at that guy laughing maniacally in his car. <laughs> She's got a great sardonic sense of humor. Hmm, almost got him. There's a, I'm sexier than you are, I guess, is what is in her voice. <laughs> and I know it, and I know you know it. <laughs> you were supposed to stay out of trouble. Don't tell me you're my very own private probation officer. How often would you like me to check in? Catwoman has to be pretty tough and strong. She's really, you know, level with Batman. You couldn't really have a, a light-voiced actress, someone who really couldn't pull it off. We needed someone whose voice had strength to it and who could actually be a true foe for Batman, as well as being sexy, and for there to be that attraction as well. You're hot. Now you notice. Ephraim has to express discipline, love, respect, all in the same five or six words of dialogue. I do wish you wouldn't be so rough with your toys, Master Bruce. Batman likes him, and uh, he, of course, is very respectful towards his boss. Dining in tonight, sir? The dissection tray, please, Alfred. A tiny bit irreverent, but always in good taste, and. <laughs> in moderation. We did the voices for a good six to nine months in 91 before any artwork came back and then had to start doing ADR to sync up the voices. And Mark Hamill and I were in the ADR room together the first day and they start in this in the sound room in this full screen with these full speakers going on this symphony score comes up and this lights come on and this, you know, full screen image of the show. Can you imagine what it was like to be sitting there? And we were both just, they came time for us to do our lines, we were both just staring like this. And I looked at him, I said, did you have any idea that this is what we were working on? He said, I, I didn't have a clue that this was going to look like this. It was breathtaking, it was so beautiful. It's a cultural icon. And to be a part of that, you know, it's, it's an honor. In a way, our version of Batman is, I think, I, at least I've heard from a lot of people from, you know, who grew up watching the show, that that's the Batman they think of when they think of Batman. It's like, oh yeah, that's, you know, the Batman animated series is, is Batman to me. And so it's neat to be a part of that legacy. Oh, no, 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 no. You were doing fine. What do you think about the Batman? And his time in Gotham is up. Well, I'll be damned, Virginia. There really is a Batman. Sir, we'll catch him. I just... <sighs> There's a call for Dr. Quinzel. We'll pick up where we left off. Welcome to my inpatient facility, Mr. Collins. I call it the playpen. The tables have turned, Mr. Collins. The kings don't run this court anymore. The jester does. It won't do. It'd be funny if it weren't so pathetic. No, what the heck, I'll laugh anyway. Ah!